The federal government on Thursday said it is adopting a holistic approach in addressing recurring incidents of greed collapse in the power sector. The Minister of Power, Adebayo Adelabu, gave the assurance when the Investigative Committee on Frequent Incidents of Grid Collapse submitted its report. The recommendations are practical and reality recommendations that are implementable. And uh, in his words, I'm quoting him, and I believe it will bring an end to the ugly trend. The scene of grid collapse will soon be a scene of the past, the Minister assured Nigerians. It was guarded that the short term recommendations are expected to be implemented within the next six months to stabilize the grid. So Nigerians in the next six months, get ready. We have to wait for the next six months before we can be assured that the grid will be stabilized. And reports have it that the grid collapsed on Thursday afternoon, the second incident in just three days. The frequent reports of the national grid collapse has been a source of concern to many Nigerians. And I told you how Nigerians, like we love to do, have put up a meme where the grid is saying I collapse for a living. <laughs> <laughs> a lot is going on in the national grid. In fact, two days ago, I was in a business center and the man, the man told me that he wasn't around when they took the lights. You know the way we used to say they took the lights. And he wasn't around. And the way they told him... That's when they gave him the information that they took lights. <laughs> See, the way they told him, he feels that the grid has collapsed. <laughs> I'm like, what is going on? Is this how? So if they take lights in your area now, like we put it, say, ah, national grid again. <laughs> All right, let's, let's hear from you on this you story. See, uh, it's, it's quite uh, funny. Let me, before I forget, you know, uh, our politicians, some of them, let me not generalize now, some of our politicians have abused the word and makes the word to lose uh, relevance, assurance. Nigerians have, you know, for the past two decades, the word assure us. Every government will come and assure. Another one will come and reassure you on the same subject. So the issue of assurance is no longer, is, is no longer a weighty word, but it's a word that is supposed to be, you know, that is supposed to have some form of integrity inside of it. But in Nigeria, from the mouth of our politicians, some of them, the word assurance is no longer something that someone can, uh, you know, you can hold. Onto. It's no longer something uh, you can be assured of. At all, at all. And then talking about the, I was in the office too, when that incident happened. That's, I think that should be the first uh, uh, grid collapse. I was in the office and then all of a sudden we were Among walking. Among these two we just I, I, had in yeah, three days. Yes. Okay. So the next thing I saw was, bam, bam. You wow. also thought about yes, it. Yes, I immediately I called my, my people. I said, what was happening? Check, check, check. Please switch off the uh, uh, socket. And then... I said, this light, uh, they didn't, uh, this light didn't go well, you know. <laughs> so we're wondering, I said, something must be wrong. I came outside, looked at the transformer, no sign of smoke or whatever. I checked my neighbors, the thing, it was a general problem. I said, okay, so the next thing I saw online was that uh, the grid national collapse. grid collapse, you know. So it's, um, it's, a very, it's a very serious situation and it's not something that, uh, we should be happy. You think it's taken as seriously as it actually is? No, no, not not is not is not. Our our government. You're asking if our government. Uh, yes, yes. No, yes. no, they are not. They are not. That's why I started by saying that the word assurance has been uh, bastardized by our politicians. You see, talking about the the, the solutions or the recommendations that has been given mm. by Minister of Power that there are things that are implementable, you know, uh, within the next six months, like, and we keep. Is this the first time this thing is happening? That's why there are some subject matters. Rather than discussing them, I just prefer solution. I just prefer solution. The truth is, prior to this time, we have had issues of generator importation and all of that. Some big boys are the ones that are making the power sector not to stand very well, that they import generator. And at some point, that particular policy, you know, the issue of importation of generator was punctured. And then we felt that our power system would have been stabilized since last two administrations he did. Uh, if I can remember vividly from uh, His Excellency President uh, Jonathan's uh, administration, the former president of uh, Nigeria before uh, uh, Buhari, the issue of power. In fact, President Jonathan talked about, talked so much about power. And if we had continued with that pace, on that pace, I believe we wouldn't have, we're not supposed to be where we are today when it comes to the power sector, uh, uh, power uh, supply in Nigeria. Mm. So I don't see anything coming out from what the Minister of Power have said. I still want to believe that it's part of 
what our leaders are doing when it comes to the power sector is intentional. Uh, they know what why, they are. Why do, you, why do you think it's intentional? Because if, if you read and hear, of course, uh, 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 Abia State was is just a case study what happened when uh, the, the current governor came, came into power. Mm. Within the next four to six months, there was a, 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 you know, a, a, a transformational, a radical transformation on, on the power sector. And it was all over the media. People were recording, sharing, and commenting the state. So if a state government, if a state government can achieve that, a state that has been, let me use the word, in darkness for years, and a state government just comes into power, then Nigeria can as well do the same. So I want to believe there is something hidden that the masses, we are not aware. There is something they are benefiting as a result of the epileptic power supply that Nigerians are having. Otherwise, I don't see any reason, just imagine within an interval of two days, national, it's not community, it's national. National greed, in other words, is, is, is a national problem. It affects that particular issue affected Nigeria. I don't know if I'm correct. Or the word national greed is, it means another thing. So it's a national, it's a country thing. It's not a state, it's not local government. Nigeria, giant of Africa, talking about national greed collapsing within an interval, two times within an interval of three days. Oh, is, is, is something that calls for weeping. And then our... But, but we're told that steps are being taken to stabilize it. When you talk about issue of steps... It, and when you look at some of the things that the minister has mentioned, you find out that it requires a lot. And that is why it's not something that's been done within a day or two days. That's why it's going to take six months for it to be stabilized. Let's see even, what happens the at funds, the end of the... Even the finance that is needed, it's a lot. It takes so much, according to the explanation of the minister, it would take so much to stabilize the grid again. What, what, what kind of fund that will be required that Nigerians cannot gather? We keep... See, Do we want to contribute... If, if it will call for that, but how sincere, how sincere. Because when you said Nigerians cannot gather, it feels like we're... No, when I talk about Nigeria, I mean, I mean the government. Maybe everybody just... No, 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 I mean the government. Oh, I mean our okay. leadership. Okay. Now, there are some... See, if you're borrowing for certain things, believe me, if Nigerians are seeing results, we will not even cry that we are borrowing. If the fund is so much that we don't have the resources, you know, to make significant improvements on a yearly basis, then let us go and borrow, rather than borrowing, you know, to do, to, to buy, you know, cars and I then... I always uh, tell people when, whenever they talk about borrowing, nobody ever goes to borrow and tells us people that, oh, we are borrowing for, you know, frivolities, we just want to buy cars and all. That's not what we're usually told. Sure. We're usually given a template. And even when they're going to borrow, maybe from the World Bank, they, they, they provide what they are going to use it for. And nobody ever says we want to just waste this money. So even if we encourage the government to go and borrow for, uh, to stabilize electricity, don't you think it's still going to be the same case? Yeah, from experience, like you said, from experience, uh, one can say it will still be the same, the same case. And that's why it, it will always point towards good leadership. Once we have good leaders, I don't think there will be misappro misappropriation of funds. Once fund is being released or... Uh, borrowed or incurred for a particular purpose, there should be a strict monitoring. That fund should be judiciously used for that particular purpose. But where you don't have a reliable government, you don't have a sincere government, you have people that see that as an opportunity for them to pack their own and go. And when UFCC invite them, they know how to manipulate and do what they can do and then get out of it. You see the same thing still uh, reoccurring. So uh, if, like I said before, if it is an issue of fund, if we can borrow to do certain things that are not core, they are not you know, fundamental needs of Nigerians, I would boldly recommend and suggest that our government should go and borrow, but it should be judiciously utilized. If it will not be judiciously utilized, no need of putting Nigeria into that particular... Uh, there usually talks about us even providing power for certain countries and it's been stable, you know. We have all of those talks. And one would wonder why our case is different. You know, at times I find it difficult to believe, to believe that, but I, I feel it's true because there has not been any kind of uh, a refutal to some of those claims. But it's something that is so shocking that we support some country when it comes to power supply, and here, here we are, 
no softness. So is is a resource cost theory. Yeah, That's what, what I would just say. Sector we even point at and say that Nigeria has really gotten it right with this sector. I, I don't think there is. I don't think there is. Any, even your sector agriculture. I, I don't go there even. I want to go there. <laughs> That's why I'm here. <laughs> Don't, Even agriculture. Don't, don't. I, I mean, whenever you talk about agriculture, people would feel, you know, some people don't, <laughs> don't know the importance of agriculture yet. Yeah. Mm. So they always feel like it's oil. But there have been talks about that being the new oil. That's where the real money is coming from now. So you should think about getting involved in agriculture. But, but then, talking about that sector, one, some people would feel like, oh, it doesn't require as much as it might require for us to invest when we talk about other sectors. Is that the case? Well, uh, agriculture, you're talking about now, right? That's what you're referring to. Agriculture is capital intensive. But one advantage agriculture has over other uh, uh, professional field or uh, 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 department is its ability to absorb virtually everybody. So long as you're ready to work, you can do something. Agriculture has the capacity to give you a job. That's why you see any country that wants to grow rapidly they think of agriculture. Because just one enterprise in agriculture can, can provide up to, you know, can give job to up to four, provide job up to four lines. You understand that unlike other, other sectors. And then, naturally, Nigeria is an agrarian community, it's an agrarian society, so we, we, we can excel in agriculture more than we can do in other, in other areas. You, you know, once you identify your winning environment, you don't struggle within that particular. Nigeria is struggling because we have left our winning environment, which is agriculture. By creation, you know, God strategically positioned Nigeria to be, to be a food producing nation. But our leaders have not really seen this as something that is divinely, uh, was divinely orchestrated. So we are busy chasing shadow. So any day Nigeria comes to that point, a few days Nigeria, ago, yes. A few days ago, I was just going through some documentaries online on mushroom production. I almost, I was, I was almost weeping. What I saw, what I saw, what I saw in China, what they were doing, mushroom production in China. You, you, the, the size of a particular local government, let me use Obiapo local government, I'm very much conversant with. The size of Obiapo local government, that premises is too small for what that particular company was using to do much, just mushroom production, well packaged, different types of mushroom, and they were exporting you know, to another country. And this is what we have all the natural resources, we have all it takes to do that. Let but me quickly ask you this question. I know the government has its own role to play in encouraging agriculture, you know, um, investing in agriculture. But let's look at private individuals. When we talk about petroleum, people used to say that uh, the private individuals are not encouraged to start up refineries. Private individuals are not encouraged. It just talks around that people have. Is that the case for agriculture? Well, th that's not the case. In fact, uh, agric is one field that uh, even as a government uh, employer, as a government worker, as a civil servant, you can invest in. So why, why don't we... Let me not say we don't have, because you might tell me now that we have, if I say we don't have. But do we have enough private individuals really investing largely not, in agriculture? Not, not enough, but Why? We, have, we have some of them. Also, Why don't we have it? In cost, in we have yes, in course yes. of our operation, in course of our experience and field work, I've come across some prominent men you know, that said they, they, that they would be willing to invest, but that they have one fear. Mm. More than three of them has made this remark. And what's the fear? Sincerity. That they don't know anything about the field, but that the way I talk, the way I preach about agriculture, and what they have read about agriculture, that agriculture is an area worth investing. But who are the ones to manage? They are scared of the people. They are scared of potential employees. That's the, that's the problem. That's the people, the ones I have had... Uh, um, interaction with that's the fear some of them have and then the issue of risk you know agriculture also has a high risk depending on the enterprise the the, the fear of losing out is also there so since some of them are not well grounded in the area they, they they don't really know how to go about it and then the major problem is the personnel or the personalities heading the department in the local government or the state or the at the national level now if a professional in the field of agriculture, a particular uh, professional field, is the one heading the government parastata 
for that particular field, you discover that there will be a whole lot of revelations, insight, trainings, and motivation that will now prompt people to venture into that. But in a situation where you have a commissioner for agriculture, a supervisor for agriculture that does not, permit me to say, the person did not even pass agric science in secondary school. The person never dreamt of, didn't even do any course that is related to agriculture, and that's a professional field, and you put that person to man the office, what do you expect? Okay, thank you for um, highlighting some of the challenges, but I'll ask you one more question on that. Okay. How are the government policies encouraging private investments? Yeah, uh, you know, uh, if talking about uh, government policies encouraging private investment, like um, when, when I was close to the government as a special assistant to a former commissioner for agriculture, there were some, there were some waivers, there were some policies that you know, favored uh, investment in the agricultural uh, sector then. Now, when it comes to issue of subsidy, grant, the percentage of uh, um, interest rate, the, the percentage of interest when you're taking a grant or a loan for agriculture is not the same. That was then, but I, I feel, I believe it's still obtainable now. Okay. Uh, yeah, so those are some of the things. And then the government also provide some facilities to, to, to reduce costs, some improved varieties. You don't, you don't just go to buy them, you don't source them yourself. Once you're into the business, government gives you improved varieties from the Ministry of Agriculture and then research centers. Those things are made available. And then the government also provide a kind of monitoring. That's the role of the extension agent. There are some, you know, uh, um, a professional, uh, 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 professional, uh, uh, what is it called now? A, a kind of professional service that will be given to you as a private farmer by the government. Government provides the extension that will come to support you. You don't pay. Mm. Your farm is having issue. The government provides veterinary services that will come okay, to do that. That's happening now. Just definitely. That's, that's, an, that's now, encouraging. It's encouraging, but do you know the challenge? The challenge is the manpower. Those policies are there. But in a situation where we're supposed to have, for instance, a community, let me just use community as, a, as an example. Mm. We're supposed to have, let's say, two extension agents in a community, two to cover. And then we're having two extension agents to cover a local government. So that's the problem. How do you now implement that particular policy? It becomes a serious challenge. So the manpower, right. engaging the right personnel, in the ministry is what is also killing agricultural Thank you so much.